yeah so in today's session uh, about chat gpt um you know, it's been in the news lately there's a lot of buzz around it so we will uh, see what chat gpt is in simplistic terms and uh, why are we even talking about this today uh, what uh, uh, how is it relevant to this group of, uh, of people on this call and what is its impact uh, what are the good things about it, the negatives and so on, so we'll cover that. Uh, but to be able to do that in some depth, uh, we should also try to go deeper into chat GPT to understand what it's actually doing, how it works, and what kind of problems exist uh, within the software that we need to be aware of when accordingly use the software. Um, so chat GPT as a software, it's a huge leap in technological terms. There have been a lot of uh, research paper published on it, a lot of research going on, people have invested a lot of money, large companies typically. Um, so so uh, there's a lot of technology involved in it. Uh, I tried my best to you know, keep it uh, simple enough. I hope I have not oversimplified it. Um, hopefully it will be useful. Uh, <clears throat> so what is chat GPT? Um, if you are familiar with chatbot software, you can uh, readily identify with chat GPT because chat GPT is a type of chatbot. Uh, and what is a chatbot? It's usually a browser based application uh, where you can, uh, you have the option of entering questions, you know, you can type in your questions and it responds with uh, its answers. Um, and chat GPT in particular is powered by artificial intelligence. That's important because there are different types of chatbot software. A lot of them are not powered by artificial intelligence. Chat GPT definitely is. Um, chat GPT is developed by a US based uh, company called uh, OpenAI. Uh, OpenAI initially started off as a non profit, um, but later you know, transitioned into a for profit. So we that a um, now, ChatGPT, a version of ChatGPT is uh, open to the public. Um, there are multiple versions of ChatGPT that have been released in the last year or so. It has predecessors that go back a few years, but those are not very powerful in terms of what they know, in terms of their capabilities. Uh, so, it has, it has not been in the news until recently when a particular version, ChatGPT 3, um, turned out to be extremely powerful in terms of what it can do. Um, so anyone can sign up uh, to the current version that's uh, been available for free sign up. The current version of ChatGPT is ChatGPT 4, if you come across this in the news. It's supposed to be slightly more powerful than ChatGPT 3. Uh, but the version that you will sign up to when you log in to this URL that's on this slide, it's a research version. It, it's uh, it could be somewhere between three and four, or it's actually four itself. Um, ChatGPT also offers a commercial version, which is a paid version for companies to make use of. Uh, the company behind ChatGPT, like I said, <coughs> OpenAI <coughs> was founded in 2015 as a non-profit organization. And their idea was to um, uh, pro provide, produce, AI-based software that is open, that is transparent. Uh, they had very noble goals, um, and they were anyway uh, funded by uh, many technology companies, often competitor companies, which came together to uh, open source uh, some of the AI technologies. Uh, but somewhere down the line, their priorities changed, and uh, OpenAI they started a subsidiary or you know, however it works it's a us based company whatever structure that they have we transitioned into a for profit company in 2019 there is still some open source software components that chat gpt has made available publicly but that has nothing to do with chat gpt um, there is some voice recognition software and so on so in an earlier session in this program uh, guru sir uh, would have talked about what's called open version that's you know, this is an example of that. Uh, you know, something that started as a non-profit, open source, but eventually became a for-profit organization. And it is uh, right now 
very heavily funded by Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft has put in a lot of money um, and has an exclusive commercial partnership. And the idea is that uh, Microsoft, uh, if you know, has its own search engine called Bing, like Google Search. Their idea is to link up uh, ChatGPT with Bing and add more capabilities into Microsoft Bing. <clears throat> so, um, chatbots come in various sizes and shapes. Uh, we'll look at a couple of examples of uh, what chatbots are because they give some core ideas around how uh, at a minimum a chatbot works. ChatGPT is much more complex than these simple chat chatbots, which we'll talk about a little later. Uh, chatbots have to be contrasted with voice bots. Um, you are probably already familiar with uh, Google Assistant, uh, Siri, and Alexa, Cortana, by Microsoft, and so on. Um, voice bots at, at their core are the same as chatbots. It's just that if it's a chatbot, uh, you use a chat-based uh, interface. You type in uh, things, questions, and you get a response back, and you carry on a conversation. Whereas voice bots, you carry on the same conversation, but directly with your uh, voice. Um, so then, if Siri and Google Assistant are already there, uh, what's new with the, uh, and if voice bots and chat bots are essentially the same, what is new about chat GPT? It's just that it is uh, extremely powerful. It is much, much more, you know, many magnitudes, um, power more powerful than any of the voice bots that we are familiar with. So we'll just quickly go to a couple of uh, simple chat bots, um, and how they work. Um, so if you are familiar with the IRCTC website and if you use that frequently, uh, you may have noticed a chatbot. Now some websites, uh, you know, have this uh, irritating ability to generally pop up this chatbot when you're not interested in talking to the chatbot. Um, but you may have seen this on some uh, commercial sites as well. Um, IRCTC, for example, has a chatbot at the bottom right. Uh, you see this uh, icon of a lady in blue. So if you click on it, it'll open up a window like this. And uh, you can, uh, you know, if you just greet it, it'll greet you back. And if you if you say, I want to book a ticket, it seems to understand your question and uh, your need. And it asks a relevant question from which, day, which station do you want to book the ticket from. Uh, so what is actually going on here? Um, the simple chatbots basically um, are trained, you know, like you would maybe train a, you know, like a pet dog or uh, even the way a, a young child learns. You, you give it a lot of similar data and tell what that means. So you can say the same phrase, I want to book a ticket, uh, I would like to book a ticket, can you book a ticket for me, and so on. So from these patterns of words, so it understands that, and then you map those keywords there, you know, book a ticket and so on, to what is called an intent, that is the ticket booking. And then tell the chatbot, okay, if the intent is ticket booking, then ask this question. Right? So that is all it is. So when I say I want to book a ticket, it understands the keywords there, book and ticket, and you know, there are different variations of this booking a ticket question that uh, it is familiar with, all of them map to the idea or concept of or the intent of booking a ticket, it will ask you a question mark. So it, it doesn't really understand that you know, there's a person who wants to travel somewhere and they have a need to book a ticket. Um, another example is uh, on the UIDA DA website, again at the bottom right. So this is typically where you find these chatbots on any website. Um, you have this Hadar Mitra. So that's also a chatbot. If you click on it, it comes up like this. So I ask this question, how can I update my biometrics? It gives uh, this uh, detailed uh, list of things that you could do. Um, so again, it works on the same basis. Uh, it understands these keywords, update, biometrics, and so on. I can ask the same question in different ways. I would like to uh, know, update my phone number or I would like to change my email ID. Uh, please tell me how to change my email ID. 
so these are all variations it it has already been trained to understand these things and based on the intent it gives you a standard response um now to tell you how to illustrate how uh, these are not really intelligent uh, if i pose a question and i actually did how can i update my aadhar number now we can't really update our aadhar number so we can only update attributes related to aadhar numbers we have an aadhar number that's all we have we can't change it right it actually gives me the exact same response you can change your you know you can make changes to your name or address but i'm not asking for that i'm asking to change my aadhar number so i'm curiously if you even uh, you know so search anywhere on the internet you will not even come across this concept of updating the aadhar number because it doesn't exist it's not possible um so that's how these uh, chatbots work right so if i and these chatbots like i said are trained with a particular intent or a set of intents in mind um so for example aadhar mitra is the intent i mean the it, it's there to help us uh, you know, do some of the usual things that we want to do and it's just packaged as a chatbot so you ask some questions it's going to help us by giving some information and we can follow that and so what happens if you give it ask something that it does not been trained for that it doesn't understand um usually these chatbots either they will just throw out a simple question sorry i didn't understand or they may be slightly more polite or they may give some options i didn't understand did you mean this and so on. so an example of that is so i asked uh, you know, a very random question where can i find payments to other it obviously didn't understand it so it's asking for clarification what did you mean so it does no idea what it's talking about um so do you want to do something with other number or do you want to enroll you know, to the other system um so that's what chatbots are at this point i'm just curious if uh, any of you actually uh, seen or worked with in chatbots interacted with uh, any of them for some one or two of you who have done if you can uh, share your experiences that would be nice anyone so can i take it that you are <coughs> not familiar with chatbots maybe if if any of you have worked on please feel free to share um yes sir chatbots in the sense you i have um, experienced it with my bank that is hdfc that's eva eva right yeah so it it pretty much provides um, a very uh, accurate explanation of what is asked with the words keywords that it can uh, pick up Well, that's my experience mm. okay yeah so based on you know i want to open a savings bank account or i want to what is the interest rate on fixed deposit so it goes by these keywords and gives you different options which you can select it gives you a menu of options and so on. yes so yes. yeah i had I, used the word e mandate so i think uh, it gave a lot of options okay okay that's nice thank you uh next time you use it uh, maybe you can not try to ask it where you can find the so or something you know totally random and see how it responds <coughs> okay so moving on um now chatbots are uh, now you can now like i said you can ask any question but it can only answer to the extent it knows it is already trained for but how you now you are all familiar i'm assuming with uh, internet search right it could be google search or microsoft bing uh, so what happens there when we ask this question where can i find penguins for well, um, internet search engines are a class of or a type of application themselves like chatbots so what happens there so when i type where can i find penguins um, so recently uh, google has come up with people also ask you know what different ways of asking the same thing that people or other people are on the world have asked so it gives that in case you want to refine your search or if you met something else you can go to that uh, but the key thing that it does is it gives you a list of uh, websites links to websites which uh, it believes contain the information that you are looking for right and then you click on uh, click on maybe the topmost link or sometimes you may not be Uh, getting what you want there, then you go to the next one, 
or based on the title there and the link you may just scroll down and uh, you know based on your price judgment you will look for something that you think matches your uh, requirement and then you go into that right so the way this works is uh, um um google essentially crawls the internet and looks for websites that uh, talk about a variety of topics and it just looks for keywords there and uh, uh, looks at the content it analyzes the entire content stores on you know, frequently occurring words and so on and just you know adds all of this to its own database and just gives you the list so that's what it does in this so you'll see it in some more detail as we go further down um, but essentially that's what it does right so it is not already trained so it is not ai at this point right so it is not but it's it's much more sophisticated than one of the simpler bots that we saw because it's able to give you lots of options and uh, uh, even up to date information and more very accurate uh, search results and so on. So that's what uh, uh, search engines does.